Welcome once again. Who are the children of God? Now, in our daily readings here, we are at John chapter 1, verses 12 and 13. Let's get right into this. Verse 12, but as many as received him, this is as many as received Jesus, to them he gave the right to become God's children, to those who believe in his name who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now let's just break this down a little bit. Okay, so as many as received him. First point here, you have to realize that the true, I mean, the true biblical, historical, real Jesus, okay, was not easy to receive. Okay, it wasn't like it it is today where they just get up and, you know, some preacher just gets up and says, you know, Jesus loves you all. And, and, you know, and all you got to do is just receive him and he will no wise cast you out. All you got to do is say a sinner's prayer. Oh, Jesus, I receive you as my Lord and Savior and you're saved. That's not the way it was. And you got to realize Jesus, when he came and well, first of all, he was born of a virgin. He was pure. He was holy. He was sinless. Okay. It says that the first message that he preached was that of repentance. Repent. Okay. He was like these street preachers today that are out in the corners and out on the streets with a sign, you know, raised up banner saying, repent of your sin, you know, or you're going to hell. Now, this is what Jesus says. Okay. He said, Repent. That was the first thing he preached. Repentance. You can't preach repentance without preaching about sin or against sin. Okay. And you can't preach repentance without at least talking about why you need to repent. You need to flee from the wrath to come. You need to flee from the judgment of God. Do you realize how much Jesus actually spoke about hell? You know, argumented to Arguably, Jesus spoke more about hell and warned people about hell than speaking about heaven. Okay? So, you got to realize when it says, as many as receive him, as many as received him, to him he gave power or the right to become God's children. Okay? So, what does it mean to receive him? Well, first of all, there's this, there's this preacher that preached hard on sin, preached repentance. You got to repent. You need to flee from God's wrath to come. It wasn't an easy message. He wasn't just like, you know, you know, walking through the rose gardens, hugging everybody and kissing the roses. He was preaching hard against sin. Let me remind you, one of the things that he, one of his most favorite words that he used was, you hypocrites, okay? He called people hypocrites. He called people whitewashed tombs. You look so good on the outside, but on the inside, you're full of dead, filthy, stinking, rotten flesh. You got death on the inside of you, but you, you, you pretty yourself up. You make yourself look good on the outside. You're, you're a whitewashed tomb. Brood of vipers, he called people. He actually even called some people the sons of Satan. Sons of hell, he called other people. I mean, he was not some just lovey-dovey, goody, two-shoe guy that just went around and just every, every, you know, blessing everybody and just loving everybody in that sense. He even called a woman a dog and refused to give her a miracle because of her race. Okay. I'm talking about what the Bible says here. I'm not talking about what your pastor says. I'm not talking about the fake golden calf Jesus that we have in some, almost every church today. I'm talking about the real deal. As many as received him, he gave the right to become God's children. You, my point is this. Do you know what it means to receive the actual real deal here? It wasn't easy. And it also goes on to say, to those who believe in his name. Again, what does it mean to believe in his name? It means a lot a lot more than just say, oh yeah, I believe in the name of Jesus. I believe in J-E-S-U-S, Jesus. I believe in that name. You, if, if you think that's what it means, you are missing it by a long shot, okay? In the scriptures, biblically speaking, when you talk about someone's name, it means a lot more than just something you spell on paper, okay? It means the actual character of that 
person. When 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 you uh, when you represent someone's name, you are bringing out the actual character, the actual per, the actual features and and character of that person. Okay. For example, the name of Jesus just isn't J E S U S. The name of Jesus is holiness. The name of Jesus is righteousness. The name of Jesus is sinlessness. The name of Jesus means you know dying to self and giving everything to God, sacrificing yourself. That's all in the name of Jesus. Take up your cross and follow him. I, I want to remind you the cross was an instrument of execution. Okay? Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. That's just like saying today, you know, you know, take up uh, whatever it is, an electric chair, you know, uh, you know, whatever it is and follow me. Like it, it was a very, very, a shocking thing for Jesus to say to his disciples, take up your cross and follow me. Those people who knew what the cross stood for, they knew that was the most horrific and most humiliating thing on earth. Don't forget, those who were crucified were crucified completely naked, torn apart. Their skin was ripped off of them. That's why it says in Isaiah that the, that Jesus, his beard was ripped completely off of him. They couldn't, you know, he couldn't even recognize it was Jesus. Okay. This is all wrapped up in his name. This is all wrapped up in his name. To believe in his name means a lot. It means a whole lot more than just believing in J-E-S-U-S, -S, okay? No, it means believing in everything that he stood for, okay? So as many as believed in his name, who were born not of blood, nor of, nor of flesh, or the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. So in other words, you cannot will yourself to become a child of God. You cannot say, I want to be a child of God. God, count me in. You cannot say that. That is the will of man. That is the will of, that's human will. You're not born of human will. You're not born of flesh. We know that, that those who are born again are not born literally, I mean, physically, materially, fleshly born again. They are born, spiritually speaking, born you know, afresh, born again, born as a child of God. And this comes down to another uh, very important point. Some people think that everybody is a child of God. Oh, everybody that was, you know, from Adam and Eve until now were all just God's children. Not even close to the truth. Remember, and I said this earlier, that Jesus called a whole bunch of people sons of Satan, children of the devil. If everybody is a child of God, why would Jesus call a whole group of people children of the devil? Because they're not, not everybody is a child of God. In fact, children of God are very few and very far between. It is got to be initiated by God himself. You cannot, it doesn't matter how much you try to be born again, no matter how much you pray, you cannot be born again of your own will. Hey, I can tell you uh, my own personal testimony here. There are many times I prayed the so-called sinner's prayer. Many times I came before God and prayed and you know all this kind of stuff, just how a lot of these evangelical preachers would have you do. I could tell you something. I cannot tell you of a you know of a surety that I was born again at that period of time. Later on, okay, this was later on. Yes, I knew I was born again when all of the old is passed away, when the sinful self is gone, when all of the sin that you are in and all the you know all that stuff that you're that you're um, you are uh, involved in, all the stuff all the lifestyle you're living when that is completely dead and the sinful self is gone, all of the old is gone and you are a brand new creation, then you can say you are born again. You don't need a preacher to tell you you are really born again. And when I say born again, I mean born of God, okay? A real child of God. If you are a real child of God, you don't need a preacher to tell you that. You know it. You can put you can put your finger on the on the time it happened. You can put your finger on the year it happened. You can you can say at this point in my life I died and I was resurrected anew, born of God. I died to the old sinful ways and I am a new creation. In fact, I tell you again, my, from my own personal testimony, when it happened to me, 
one of my neighbors actually uh, said to me, hey, what happened to you? It's like a night and day difference. Well, obviously I was glad they asked because then I can tell them, hey, you know what? I'm born again now. I'm not the way I was a few weeks ago. <laughs> I'm completely different. I'm a brand new person. I'm not the same person as I was before I was born again. Not even close. So is everyone a child of God? Absolutely not. Not even close. Children of God are very few and very far between. Can you will yourself to be a child of God? No, you can't. It's got to be sovereign. It's got to be God's will and God's initiation. Can you pray to God that you get born again? Well, sure you can pray to God. Sure you can ask God to include you in that number. You got to be careful. Uh, you got to be aware that when you pray and ask such things, you, you know what you're praying for because uh, you're going to be rejected. You're going to be reje rejected by your friends. You're going to be rejected by your family. You're going to be rejected by your co-workers. Why? Because God said, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. And I will be a father to you and you will be my sons and daughters. And that's another thing. That is another p powerful point. And I just want to leave you with this point. In order to be born again, you must come out from among them. You must come out and be separate. This is what it means by being holy. Jesus said, be holy, okay? Oh, time and time again, it says in the scriptures, be holy. God said, be holy for I am holy. Be holy as I am holy. What's holy mean? Separate. You think different than the world does. You, you, you live different than the world does. You are separate from them. Doesn't mean that you come out from the world, obviously, as the scripture says, but it means that you are, even though you're in the world, you're not of the world, you think differently. You behave differently. You are completely different than these other kinds of people, than worldly, secular people. You don't listen to secular music anymore. You don't listen to secular TV uh, shows or you don't listen to secular videos anymore. You're not into this kind of stuff anymore. You're not into any kind of thing that's secular anymore. You are into what is holy. You are glued to the pages of the scripture. Okay? That is what it means to be holy. So, I'm calling every one of you, for all whosoever will and whosoever God wills, come out from among them. And a lot of you, you might say, well, I can't stop smoking. Well, I can't stop drinking. Well, I can't stop doing this particular substance. The first thing you got to do is come out from among them. Change your friends. I mean, a lot of you, it's a lot more beneficial for you to have no friends than to have the friends that you're having. So come out from among them. Don't hang, them. don't hang out with them anymore. Don't have them over to your place anymore. Don't hang out with them at your break times or lunch times anymore. Don't call them up. Don't go out with them anymore. Okay? Be separate. Bury your head into the scriptures. Get serious with God before he gets serious with you. Because when he gets serious with you and you're not ready, you don't want to be in that position. So take the warning and go for it. Dive in the things of God in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus. Amen.